So compromise or fight, what is the best strategy for Republicans? Senator Tim Scott joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good to be with you, Greta. How are you doing? Nice to have you. And I know you're not a big fan of Obamacare, so I'm curious. Do you think that now is the time to compromise and you know work out some wrinkles, or is it time now to fight it for you? Well, I think it's time for us to continue to fight it because fi factually this policy simply doesn't work. It's too big, 2,000 plus pages, a regulatory environment that's created it may include over 30,000 pages. It's too complicated. You do not get to keep the insurance that you like. You break the very intimate relationship between a doctor and a patient and factually it's also too expensive. It started out at $900 billion in 2009. It went to $1.8 trillion in 2011 and perhaps even as high as $3 trillion. And Greta, the worst part is that we started with 15% of Americans without insurance and most experts say that we'll have 10% of Americans still without insurance after spending $3 trillion and collecting a new $800 billion in revenue from higher taxes and higher fees. This well, it's is awful. You know, it's sort of hard to figure out exactly what it is. It's quite a, uh, uh, it has quite a uh, uh, sort of an evolution. I mean, just the other, just the other day, we learned that uh, it's not going to cover members of Congress or their staffs. We've got delays in the employer mandate. We've got the cap on uh, on deductibles for the consumer that has been lifted as of February. We've got waivers to unions, waivers to corporations. So it actually it seems to like change every single day, and we just sort of sit by and watch. What are you doing about it? Well, a couple of things. Number one, when I'm on doing my town halls, I continue to explain what Obamacare is not. A lot of people still believe that you get free health insurance. And the fact of the matter is not only do you not get free health insurance, the cost in the individual market in South Carolina could increase as high as 60%. Companies are now calling my office and telling me that they're experiencing a 22 to 25% increase in the small business market. The fact of the matter is that what we know for sure is that a year from now, even with the employer mandate being delayed for a year, we're looking at the end of the 40-hour work week because of the national health care plan. And so think about this, Greta. People who are working hard every single day, some, some employees will see their income cut by 25 percent because of Obamacare. They will no longer be able to work the 40-hour work week. They'll have to work under 30 hours. And this is a decision being pushed on employers because of a piece of legislation that no one fully comprehends the negative impact it will have on our economy, on our health care, and our individual freedoms. Is it fair what happened last week when right before the recess began, President Obama and the, uh, and, and the OPM issued that rule so that members of Congress, House and Senate, and their staffs are exempted from Obamacare, the very statute the president and at least uh, many Democrats voted to impose on the American people. But why is it good enough for us and not good enough for you? Well, it's, it's, number one, it's a bad decision. Our, my understanding is the president met with the congressional Democrats and worked out a deal. He did not meet with us. At the end of the day, we believe, as we consistently have, that we should live with the laws passed by this nation. What do you, if, if, if push comes to shove, and if, if, uh, if the funding of Obamacare is going to be sort of hanging in the balance with the, with the uh, debt ceiling issue, are, are you willing to sort of, are you willing to have the government shut down um, in terms to fight for Obamacare and the funding now, or do you think that there's some sort of, you know, compromise or something will be worked out or has to be worked out? Well, I, I don't see a compromise coming. I think there are two separate issues, funding of Obamacare, which I oppose, and also the continuing resolution, which I also oppose. The notion of funding our government on these short-term spending plans is an awful decision by the federal government. At the end of the day, as a small business owner for the last 15 years, the last thing you want is lack of certainty and the ability not to predict your future. What can short-term continuing resolutions do is it puts in place both things, uncertainty and no predictability. This is bad for our economy. I have not supported most of them in the past. I will not be supporting the continuing resolution. I voted against the last Budget and Controlled Act because they simply do not make sense. They're not logical. And of course, you're new to the U.S. Senate, so uh, for whatever preceded, uh, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, you weren't, you, don't blame you, I should say, because you're relatively new to the U.S. Senate on a lot of this stuff. All right, Senator, let me ask you about another topic. Did you hear Senate Sorry. Majority Leader Harry Reid's latest controversial comments? First, here's what Senator Reid told a Nevada radio station. My counterpart, Mitch McConnell, 
said at the beginning of the presidency of Barack Obama that he had one goal, and that is to defeat Obama, make sure he wasn't reelected. And that's how they how they legislated in the Senate. It was really bad. And we've been now seven months into this uh, second uh, term of the presidents, and they haven't changed much. So I, I it has been obvious that they're doing everything they can to make him fail. Uh, and I hope, I hope that it's, uh, and I say this seriously, I hope that uh, they're, that's based on uh, substance, not the fact that he's an African-American. Senator, as the only African-American in the U.S. Senate, what are your thoughts on those comments? Senator Harry Reid says he hopes that uh, the GOP opposition to the President Obama is based on substance and not race. I think it's a shame, shameful comment. Let's just put it right where it should be. It is a shameful comment for Senator Reid to play to the lowest denominator playing the race card. At the end of the day, we on the GOP happen to be Republicans, we all know, and black. At the end of the day, here's what we have to ask ourselves. Do we support the president's policies? And the answer obviously is no. Why don't we support it? Well, here's the reasons why we don't support it. Our economy, our GDP is growing at 1.7%. It is awful, very slow. Number two, Obamacare. Here we have another $1.8 trillion new entitlement that we cannot afford. We have 15% of Americans not working, not able to find insurance. We'll have 10% after spending at least $2 trillion, maybe upwards of $3 trillion. We have Dodd-Frank, the inability for banks to lend money. It stops entrepreneurship from happening. We consistently hear from our folks that they can't find the resources to get into business when the unemployment rate has been staggering over 7% for nearly four years. Uh, all those important issues, it's hard to get to the, the debate if you have Senator Harry Reid making the accusation of racism rather covertly. And I guess I would give him sort of a pass on this one, but he's sort of a serial committer. I mean, it's a little weird. The only one talking about race is Senator Harry Reid. And you may remember during the election uh, back two cycles ago, when he was talking about President Obama, he said he made some bizarre reference about no ne that President Obama had no Negro dialect unless he wanted to have one. Clearly, he was bringing up the issue of race. It's a little bizarre. He's the one that keeps bringing it up, which sort of injects this horribly poisonous topic so we can't have a good debate. It's remarkable that what we consistently see from our friends on the left is the pivot. Uh, when things start going bad, they pivot to a different topic. And when things get really bad, when their policies are not working, they want to find a way to bring all the attention to something that is nowhere near the performance of the political environment driven by the White House and Senator Harry Reid. This is what makes us so hard to find common ground in the Senate and in the Congress. We simply can't find common ground when no one's looking for ways to move the American people forward. Americans don't want Republican solutions. They don't want Democrat solutions. They want American solutions. We need to get back to the business of creating jobs and not talking about things that simply have no place today in the political environment. No one else is talking about race. You know why? They're talking about unemployment. They're talking about creating jobs. They're talking about a better economy. We need to stick with the issue at hand. Well, it's particularly painful when it's a Senate Majority Leader whose job is sort of, you know, to, you know, to, to, to be uh, there to sort of to foster debate and to make sure people, yes. you know, bring their passions to the floor on the important issues. And it's almost like it's almost like that weird thing he did with Romney, where he said something about Romney's taxes, and yet he wouldn't identify his source. He said it was anonymously. It was just it sort of, I thought it soiled uh, his reputation, uh, the Senate Majority Leader's reputation. I mean, he seemed small and petty. He wanted to sort of deviate from important issues. And he just wanted to sort of get somebody. Or I mean, I, I you know I really sort of thought that it soiled his credibility. I can't understand what he's thinking. I do know that the unintended consequence when we pull out the race card, when there's no racial issue on the table, is that it sullies the ability for us to solve problems together. It sullies the ability for us to have a meaningful conversation, to create dialogue around the issues that so many Americans are having to solve. Right now, we have moms and dads heading to 
tables, kitchen table, and trying to figure out their bills. They want to figure out why most of the jobs that we're creating right now are part-time jobs. They want to understand how Obamacare is going to take more money out of their pockets on top of the $600 plus billion dollar new tax increase that started earlier this year. We have real problems, we need real solutions, and we need everyone to come to the table and get serious about the American people and not protecting their political hide. Let me add one other thing. We need leadership, and that's mean you know, you know let's, let's you know let's get to the issues and not be petty or try to uh, uh, derail you know, these important uh, discussions about it. Senator, thank you, sir. Absolutely, Greta. Thank you for having me on.